So first we're going to take a look at the Rapido Trains F59PH from Go Transit Commuter Rail Service in Canada. And this is the late version of it. So let's get started here in the front. On top we have the horn and the e-bill hanging down below. Then we have this interesting three window windshield which has window wipers for each of them and they're nicknamed the Triclops. And on top of the nose we have some sand filler hatches which have some markings around them. Then we have the yellow grab iron ladder in the front and grab irons on the sides. And over here we have some classification lights and they are just to determine the status of the train so there's gonna be a red green and white and we have a nose mounted headlight now the lights sort of appear greenish I don't know it's just because it's off and there's also nose mounted number boards on the right we have a door to access the cab and a go transit banner in the front it's made of a solid piece of plastic and the edges are cornered and here's what it looks like from the back you can see the stanchions are still there and there are some holes at the bottom of the nose then down here we have a white anti-climber and some pilot mounted ditch lights we also have receptacles for the MU cables and head and power. The hose is tucked into snow plow and a coupler cut lever. And here's a metal knuckle coupler, which Rapido calls McDonald Cartier. And down the bottom, we have two train line hoses, which is a bit odd. Usually there's only one. Then on the side, we have some railings for the step well, which has four steps and three of them are painted white. There also is a light at the top. And here's what it looks like from above. The steps are actually see-through metal grates. All right, so now let's go check out the side. Above the cab windows, we have the sunshade as well as a side view mirror slash wind deflector. This model is also detailed with a full cab interior, although it's kind of hard to see with the lighting, you can make out where the seats are. In the front corner of the nose, you can actually see the flag of Ontario, which is the Canadian province that Go Transit runs in. So there also is this bump over here. It's actually a cab air vent, which can open up. Then down the bottom, we have the road number 564, as well as the class name and some really tiny builder plates. There are two because it was remanufactured. Here we got some more molded on detailing, as well as the truck down below, lots of little parts and plumbing. The first wheel also includes this axle generator for the speed recorder. It actually goes up into the body. So for the paint scheme, we have white on the nose and then green and white and then green again and a Go Transit logo. Now let's move down the side. We can see some air intake grills at the very top. This one's for the dynamic brakes. We have a yellow grab iron and some molded in detailing. Then down at the bottom, we have the emergency fuel cutoff switch, the fuel filler cap, and the fuel sight glass. Then we have the small fuel tank here as well as this. I don't know what it is. Let me know down in the comments. Further down, we have the Go Transit logo. It appears to be on some kind of latch door here. Some more molded in detailing and the radiator air intakes and the HEP generator in the back. Then down below, we have the these two air reservoir tanks. Lots of nice plumbing detail all around it. And here's a look at the truck at the back, some more wires. So in the rear of the locomotive, we have the sand filler hatch. It's sort of indented into the body. In the back, we have these four steps on the side, all painted white, some yellow stanchions and grab irons. Then above, we have the hood for the HEP air intake filter, which broke off in the packaging, so I had to glue it back in. Adjacent to that is the rear headlight. In down below is the road number, a door on the right with a circular window, and a grab iron ladder on the left-hand side. There are also some covered slots for marker lights. Down at the bottom, we have a lot of detailing that we've seen already in the front, but this time there is some bumpers where some air hoses go inside. There also is a gap here in the middle, and there's only one train line hose. So the truck on this side actually has a brake chain, which is a real chain. Then down here, we have the air reservoir tanks. This time there is a spitter valve. And over here, we have an access door with a doorknob, some grab irons on the side, and a ladder down below. Then we have this radio fuel gauge, which there is a bit of overspray here. All the other essential fuel detailings, and there is a box in the back of the fuel tank. Let me know what this is actually called. So the front looks pretty much the same thing as the other side, just the flag is backwards and it doesn't have the speed recorder. So now let's go take a look at the roof. In the front, we have these two RV style air conditioners and you'll see these in the late version of it. Then over here we have a small Sinclair antenna which there is a larger silver one here in the back. There is a lot of molded in detailing here. I also found it interesting the air intakes are different lengths per side. Also check out those lift rings. Over here we have the exhaust and some cooling fans on the roof. The grills are see-through so you can see the fan blades reflect in the light. Lots of small details scattered around and here's what it looks like in the back. There's these two little boxes. I have no idea what that's for. And now let's go take a look at the underside. So here you can see the snow plow, the truck, the fuel tank, and the air reservoir tanks. You can see there's actually a lot of plumbing that goes along the underbody, and it's interesting the fuel tanks slightly onto the left-hand side. And here's the rear truck.
So first we'll take a look at the bi-level commuter car. This is the cab car. So starting from the front, we have a K5 LA horn with some bars on top and a steel mechanical bell, which can be swapped with an e-bell if you want to modernize it. Then above we have a Go Transit logo, some twin headlights, the car number here on the side 206, as well as some grab irons, which are placed throughout and some cool green chevrons at the bottom. And here's how it looks like from the front. The door window is actually aligned towards the left-hand side. There are also three latches on the door to help seal the door shut because it's the front of the train. You can see some nice riveting detail as well as a bar on the left hand side. We also have a cab operator window here on the left with windshield wiper and you'll notice the other side is blank and that's because this is an earlier variant of it. Later versions include them on both sides. We also have these three color lights which the bottom one is painted on and it's a bit smudged. And at the bottom we have some headlights although they look different per side I'm not sure why. Underneath that we have some hazard warning labels and there's some receptacles for the head and power, a metal coupler and two train line hoses down below. Over here we have a couple of cut lever and the sides of the plow are angled up. Here's a close-up view of the gangway. You can see there's lots of molded in details, the tiny rivets, and the top half has a cord in while the bottom part is flat. On the sides, you can see the metal side view mirrors, which are on both sides, and they're actually bent backwards. So now let's go check out the side of the car. So over here, we have these three windows. In the front, there's actually a black divider, while the other two windows have this blue tint to it. There also are some grab runs at the top, the middle, and the bottom, and the letters A and L to show it's the A in the car, left side, and there's also this curvy bit to act as a roof, I guess for snow and rain, and lots of molded in rivets and lines which you can see clearly in the light. Up above we have a small vent here, it's made of etched metal. Car number 206, some more molded in details at the bottom, and the truck design is quite interesting. You see the first wheel has this sort of brake disc around it, while the other wheel is normal. On the upper level we have a window with a divider, it's the same as the front except it's painted silver. Then moving further down along we have this double door with some gaskets, and down at the bottom there is this metal platform which is see-through etched metal. Here's a reflecting in the light and next to the door we have a no smoking sign and some other small tiny details. So on the upper floor we have nine windows and the bottom floor we have five windows. On top we have this box apparently it glows red and the Go Transit logo, the Government of Ontario Transit, some emergency labels, then we have another double door here, a larger vent on this side, a battery box and a stirrup step. So here's a view of the other end of the car. On top we have this extruded shield shape, has some rivets, a little green mark there. The gangway has some grab irons on side sides and this window is also asymmetrical and there's also a door spring. We also have the manufacturer's word mark here, Hawker Sidley Canada. This is before Bombardier took over. Then some more detailing down the bottom. So on the other side we have a vent on top. This one is smaller and here's a view of it on the sides. Pretty much the same thing just the other way around. With the exception of the front cab, the first window is a lot smaller and looks like a square. It's also interesting the front cab window and the side cab window, they are on different axes. And down below we have R for right side. By the way, did you know these doors can actually open up. Alright so now let's go check out the roof detail. So we already checked out the horn and the bell but also on top there's a part where it's painted in an off-white color. You can see some molded on riveting as well as these tiny lift rings. There also is a see-through metal grate with a fan on the inside and a Sinclair antenna. All along the middle of the roof we have a lot of riveting detail going across and the other end is detailed similar to the front. Alright, so let's go take a look at the bottom. So here's a look at the truck. There's a lot of detail in this piping, electrical pickup, as well as the truck has an interesting design. The brake discs for the wheels actually alternate per side. Here you can see the see-through metal platforms for the doorways, some pipes for the air brake system, and a Rapido made in China stamp. And we have some tanks over here, as well as some more under plumbing detailing, and the other side with the boxes. <laughs> So now let's go take a look at the standard regular coach. On the end, it looks nearly identical to the cab car's end, but it does have this drum on the left and the receptacle colors switch sides. So this is considered the A end of the car, the front, and there is a battery box down below. And now we're gonna go all along the side of the car just to see what it looks like, which is pretty much the same. Nothing really different on this side. And here's a look on the other end. Got the battery boxes both sides. And here's the other side of the car. It's nearly identical, except in the front. There's no window right here because this is where the washroom is. There also is a drum right below it, so I think this is where they collect the waste. And here's what it looks like from the front. So the roofs of the car are pretty much identical. It's just missing the Sinclair antenna, the bell, and the horn. The bottoms are pretty much the same thing, except on the front end. They just have different details. <laughs> So 
So I had to take it off the shelf because apparently there was this loose screw that was rattling inside, although I don't know where it came from. And here you can see how they tinted the blue windows. And they also have this clock on the roof, which I believe shows you when it was manufactured. So while we're here, we're gonna take a look at the interior. On the left, we have this orange washroom, lots of seating, painted blue. You can see the pillars. There's a battery on top, some electrical connections, a staircase linking the levels. In the middle, you can see some seats are facing each other. And let's go along to the other side. I really was not planning on showing you guys this, but I might as well. And you can also see the ceiling lights. So finally, we unbox the entire Rapido Go Transit train. The last commuter car was exactly like the other one. It just had a different car number. So the buy level is actually taller than the F59PH, except on the ends where the F59 is a little bit taller. So here is the Atlas New Jersey Transit multi-level coach. It's also a bi-level. They have a lot of similar functions, although they're built a lot differently. New Jersey Transit has a center door window, and also the cab windows are more square. They both use the K5LA horn, although it looks slightly different. You can also see the headlights are inside versus outside, and the gangways are accordion versus tubular. The roofs also have a different unique shape, but all of these passenger cars are generally the same length. Go Transit has a blue window tint, while New Jersey Transit has this grayish one. And Rapido trains are very proud of their underbody detail, which you won't find in other manufacturers like Atlas, it's all blank, or the Kata Superliner, also blank. As for the window heights on the top level, the windows don't match, the Go Transit is a bit higher. They are pretty similar at the bottom though. And compared to the Superliner, it's closer, but the Go Transit windows are still a bit higher. This car also comes with interior lighting, so here's what it looks like in the dark. It has that blue tint on the windows, and you can see on the inside it looks pretty realistic. The doors at the end of the cars also do light up, and for whatever reason, if you guys want to turn the car lights off, you can use the included magnetic wand and just wave it above the center of the car, and it should turn it off and on. If you have DCC, you can also use it to change the marker lights, but in DC it just relies on the direction of the current. The F59 also has ground lighting in DC, which is pretty cool looking.
So for my final thoughts, I think Rapido did a pretty good job detailing these models. They look fairly realistic and accurate. It comes with interior, lots of fine etched metal parts, and underbody detailing that other manufacturers don't bother with. I really like the lighting of the cars and the ground lighting on the F59PH in DC was a first for me. Usually you have to have DCC to enable it. They do cost quite a bit, but I would say they're worth their price, especially if you want a realistic model. They do come in other liveries like Metrolink, Trinity Rail Express, AMT, and there's going to be a new run next year with even more options, especially from the West Coast like Coaster, Sounder, New Mexico Rail Runner, Utah Front Runner, Cowtrain, Alamont Quarter Express, and the modernized Go Transit and Metrolink. However, they still haven't announced any power for these trains, which are usually pulled by the MP36, MP40, or the F40PH. Rapido does have some F40PH models in the past, so maybe they'll release them in the future. For the cons, there is a bit of quality control with the HEP generator hood coming off in the packaging. This is a common issue which I've seen in multiple videos, but it's relatively easy to glue back on. There was also that screw that was loose in one of the coaches, and a bit of paint splattering and smudging. The printing of the flag on Ontario I think could be a little bit better with more white showing than red, and the lights sort of look greenish when it's off. They also give you a lot of stickers and wands for each car, so now I have three wands, which I only need one, so I think it's a bit unnecessary. But overall, it's a pretty great model. I got these from HiawathaHobbies.com, and of course, after I bought them, apparently there's a sale right now, so they're like $60 less than when I bought them. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.